and welcome to Live Art TV. My name is Thomas Boskett, and we're here to talk about our auction that's happening February 25th at 3 p.m. It's going to be live on liveauctioneers.com. That's liveauctioneers.com, and you can also find us at livearttv.com. If you have any questions in this whole loop through, you can give us a call. We are at 855-983-5483. I want to talk to you about a whole bunch of different things today. I want to talk to you about object art, uh, some silver that we have, unbelievable pieces that are unusual, like this ink well. We've got flatware that's gorgeous. I'll take you through that in a little bit. And we've got paintings that you can see behind me from some unusual people and interesting people. This woman is lovely, and we'll talk about her later. And then, like I said, we have silver pieces from Kirk and Sons and Tiffany's. Um, we've got some wonderful sculptures here and there and carpets. And actually, the carpets are Karabakh carpets that are hand dyed with vegetable dyes and made by Russian artisans that will take you inside the picture of what it means to envision uh, a life with no plan. It's kind of like how we're all living nowadays. <laughs> so let's go on a bit of a journey. I think we'll start up here. Let's go over this way and take a look at this piece. Now this piece is a bowl. It's a Tiffany bowl. It's sterling silver. And in the auction, if you go to liveauctioneers.com, you'll see this piece in lot 187. The estimate is three to $4,000 for this piece. And I want to take you through it a little bit. Look at the inside of this. Hold on a second here. Look at this detail on this bowl. It's really pretty exquisite what's going on. Incredible filigree detail. And this lace work up here is actually uh, punched through. It actually goes right through to the back. You might be able to see my finger back there a little bit. Anyways, this is an exquisite piece. It's got a handle that's moving, obviously. And it's a bit of a bowl that you can carry fruit in or whatnot. A uh, bouquet of flowers would even be gorgeous in this. And it's stamped on the bottom. You'll find that when you see it up live. But it says Tiffany's and Company. And it is original Tiffany bowl. That's a heck of a piece. Beautiful piece. And it's, like I said, a silver bowl, Tiffany's, sterling silver, intricately punched and carved out. Um, now, that kind of leads me into our silver pieces. I think I'll take a little journey here. This piece down here is by Kirk and Sons. This is a tea set. And this is the tea kettle right here. A spectacular piece. I'm going to come around. Hold on a minute. Let me let me cut around the front here. Excuse me. Chip. I want to be on this side to look at this piece. Look at this piece here for a second. Take this piece right here, and we'll take a little cruise around it. This is actually the coffee pot, uh, Kirk and Son tea kettle. And you can see, if you look very closely at this, you'll see there's little um, roses and rose buds and all different leaf patterns. There's uh, geranium, looks like leaves down here. Beautiful pieces. There's an ivory piece on the handle here. That's a wildly elaborate piece. I don't know if you can catch a glimpse of the side, but there's quite a bit going on with the roses. There's all bundles of roses up here. And then it looks like peony kind of fronds down here. This is a lovely piece. Um, this whole set has a creamer and a sugar bowl that's with it. And the whole piece is, like I said, designed by Kirk and Sons. And let's see what the estimate is in this piece. We have a piece that's going in the auction. The estimate is five to 8,000 for the entire thing. This is 3,200 grams of silver in this entire set. And it's a beautiful four-piece set. It's, it's quite. Uh, quite stable. You'll feel it when you, when you hold it in your hands. It's a nice, heavy piece. And if you get around to this uh, teapot again, look at this. You see all the details on the bottom of the leaf work? This is an exquisite piece, really beautiful. Um, you'll have to look as close as you can when you get a chance to visit it online, take a zoom in. We've got some beautiful pieces behind it, these flatware. There's a huge set of flatware. It's hundreds of pieces of flatware. I think we've got 100, what do we have? 149 pieces. Every single piece. This is a, it's, it's stamped Mappin and Webb Sheffield. It's estimated to go for 11 to 20,000. This is a 12 person service of all the pieces you need for service. Every single piece is stamped with the Sheffield stamp on the back. And you'll see that there's, there's knives. Hold on a minute here. 
Let me take you out a little bit. Look here. You've got dessert and, and, and fish. This is dessert on this side. You've got fish on this side. Look at your fish knives. You've got beautiful, curvaceous tips on a fish knife, right? It's a lovely piece. Each piece is stamped with the Sheffield stamp right there. And they're all packaged or wrapped up in this beautiful cabinet. It looks like an oak cabinet right now. And it closes, obviously. Uh, we might leave it open for the moment just so you can keep looking in there, enjoying this. This is a, a beautiful piece. There's a piece next to it. Look at this. This is an unusual, unusual piece. What is this bowl? <laughs> it's a, a, an ink bowl? Hold on a minute. Let me look at the bottom. Tiffany and Sons. Tiffany and Company again. And I want to get down here. Let's take a glance at this, this piece. Can you see it here? Let's see what you see. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you, Chip. It's sort of a leaf plane, an interlocking leaf pattern on the bottom. It's sort of like lace wrapping around. It looks like an ivy leaf almost climbing up around the vase. And it actually climbs up around. You can see it reflected on the inside, climbing up around the inside. But it's very smooth up in there. That's actually a reflection if you see my hand in here. Climbing up onto the bowl and around the edges. There's sort of another tiny little leaf pattern. Very, very, very intricate. It's hardly visible. I'm going to put on my glasses. And it's like a, a small kind of leaf to leaf pattern. It's very delicate. It's a nice piece. Glance at that. You can see everything in the room with it. <laughs> it is such an elegant bowl. This bowl could easily be used as a centerpiece on a table. Behind it, as I spoke of earlier, there's this wonderful inkwell. And let me get you some specifics on the inkwell so you can find out the details. Um, this is a, a, a lot 189. Remember that you can check us out at liveauctioneers.com. We are livearttv.com. And our number is 855-983-5483. The easiest thing to do is just go to liveauctioneers.com and look up livearttv.com, and you can find us there. It's also on the top left side of your screen right now, livearttv.com. Look at the lace work involved in this. This inkwell is, a st is Sterling silver made by Robert Gerard of London in 1844. It is inscribed on the bottom, and it weighs in at 2.5 kilograms. That's 2.5 kilograms of silver. The estimate for this piece will be seven to eight thousand dollars. And what we do? Let's take a peek inside. On this side, we have where the pens would sit. So your pens would sit all along this full length here. And then if you go to the other side, take a glance around this end. You've got the actual ink wells. So on the left, you've got where the ink well would sit in here. And you've got a glass ink well, so it's actually still functioning. And then you have some things where you could keep related objects like blotters and whatnot that connect to the ink well. On the far side, you also have another glass ink well. This is quite a beautiful piece and very unusual. Uh, the patterns on it are sort of this combination of kind of uh, Art Nouveau and uh, kind of an early Renaissance kind of script. But they look a little bit more curvaceously nouveau to me. So let's set that back over here. Beautiful handle on it. Can you see the leaf work here? Look at that leaf work. See that? A little bit of a glance in at the leaf. And it's a sturdy handle. I'll tell you that. That piece weighs quite a bit. It's a nice piece of silver. Um, if we go along here, let's come around to the other side for a second. Come over here. And look at this tray. This tray is lot 190. Gome sterling silver tray weighing 47 and 50 grams. Now, I'm going to pick this up. This is estimated to go for six to $7,000. And this is quite a piece of silver. Uh, there's beautiful detailing on it. You can see all the, root, the, the edges are sort of a, it's like a sea scallop. Um, it's got a sea scallop running around with a fern interleafed in between it. And it's incredibly elaborate around the edges. Kind of quiet in the center. It's a nice way to offset some fish. Uh, or you could set out a, an array of, of hors d'oeuvres. But this is a spectacular piece. And it's, it's quite a heavy piece, too. It's a beautiful piece. I don't know if you want to peek. Let's peek at the back side. Whoa. That's a heck of a piece. It's got some weight to it, some substance. That'll last a lifetime. Your family will pass that down forever. I can tell you right now, you'll have that for 
a lifetime of a family um, can enjoy it. And again, that was Goham Silver weighing 4,750 grams. This is, some of the pieces we're looking at today are from a collection of uh, silver, sterling silver, all sterling silver, hand wrought and crafted by artisans that are for sale in an auction on February 25th at 3 p.m. at liveauctioneers.com, livearttv.com is where you can find out about that, or you can go to liveauctioneers.com and then just search for livearttv.com and you'll get to us. If you wanna zoom in over here, we'll look at this collection. There's a small collection of about 12 slippers. And these unusual little slippers, wait till you see some of the things that are in here. This is lot 184. They're a collection of sterling, sterling silver shoes weighing 689 grams. The estimated value of these is 4,000 to 5,000. And if you look at some of these, you'll see there's wonderful kind of lacy details. There's a whole scene of a milkmaid and a cow and everything on the side of this one that's a, a, a Dutch scene. And obviously, obviously, it's a Dutch clog made of silver. But then I found these moments when I was looking through this collection earlier. Look at the silver little slipper. Right? And this is a great piece. I'm sorry, Chip, I'm going to jump you a little. There you go. Look at that silver, right? This is a beautiful shape, really kind of a soft, subtle, curvaceous little heel and whatnot. But here's the surprise. Look at this. The bottom of this is made of wood, which shocked me. There's an inlay of wood that sets into the shoe. Uh, beautifully crafted. You hardly even notice it. I mean, when I'm up on top, I didn't even think about it. And then I turned it over and thought, wow, it's got a wooden slipper. I thought, what made people think of that? Um, maybe stability, you know, not good to walk in a metal shoe, but good to walk on wood. <laughs> we were starting with wooden shoes. They're fun little guys, and I think this is sort of a, this is an unusual lot to me, like, like to have a collection of little slippers. It's sort of a fantasy. Um, I think, what are, we, what are we doing, like, with things that look like, this is like a row of corn, it's this bizarre little corn slipper, um, and a lot of them feel like they have kind of uh, celebrations of fruits and vegetables and babies, and obviously they're tiny slippers, and so they're very much so about childhood uh, and the naivete of things like the natural world, like farming and whatnot. This one has a, looks like a, a bumblebee, but it's actually pieces of fruit that are bulb bulbous and kind of floating up on top. Isn't this wonderful? There you go. See that little bumblebee kind of shape? It looks like a piece of fruit got flowers, that's a great little piece. Look at that, let's see if I can show you it from the side. There you go, it's like a boat. <laughs> this is like a, a, a king's ark, something you'd sail around in if you had a, you didn't have your magic carpet, you could get your magic slipper. So let's come back here a little bit and look at this. This is uh, an unusual piece over here on the back of the table. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. This is a, a a clock, um, I'm not finding it for you, there we go. It's a champlevé, it's called mantle clock. This would sit up over your fireplace and it's a painted enamel, it's unbelievably intricate. Uh, all these pieces have been carved and then and cast into this piece that is enameled in gold. And it was made for the Chinese market in the 20th century. It's, it's an eight day going, hour and a half striking mantle clock. It's estimated to go for $4,500 to $5,500, and that'll be at liveauctioneers.com. If you're looking for the Live Art TV link on there, if you get lost, go to livearttv.com and find us. And if you ever have any questions or comments you want to feedback, look at the detail in there. Look at the nuances of all the carving that's going on. Incredible details. And remember, this is a Champlevé mantle clock with painted enamel panels done in the 20th century for the Chinese market. It is lot 191 at the auction. Beautiful details, really the chip is on his mark today. Look at, <laughs> look at your, your zoom in. Um, this clock will go for 45 to 5,500 and it is quite large. It's actually 20 by 20 inches high and about nine inches thick. So it's a, it's a significant piece to sit up on the mantle and it's really beautiful. Um, you'd have to see it live again to get the whole notion of what it is, but it's this wonderfully uh, enameled brass clock, the whole thing. So quite a, quite a piece to look at. Now, I'd like to take a look at some of the paintings that we have behind me. Uh, let's come on up over this way. Come on up, maybe we'll come up. You wanna look at this one? Let's take a look at this. This is one of my favorites today. This is a painting by Mariana Edna Volz. 
She painted during 1930 to about 2003, so very frequently. And believe it or not, this piece came to us from Christie's New York, and it's 36 inches by 48 inches, and it was painted in 2008. Um, I'm sorry, it was auctioned off at Christie's in 2008. My apologies. And the estimate for this is that uh, the estimate is 2,500 to 3,500, and it's lot 78. So when you go to our auction, look up lot 78 and see this is Mariana Edna Volz. She painted from 1930 to 2003, and she has this wonderful quality to this painting. It's it's. What strikes me about it is this, this economy of means, this economy of shapes. There's one shape next to another shape, next to the next shape. It's very Matissean, actually, to lock the shapes in like this. But then what's, what's very bizarre to me is all the shapes are kind of turned up flat on this panel. So although it's a table that looks like it's supposed to be you know, flat and kind of heading out this way, it's headed up straight towards your face, OK? And you've got this strange cut. You've got these wonderful textures and patterns. Look at, look at all these shapes and things you're taking a journey through all of these patterns and these shapes locking into one another, that's exquisite. Um, back up and let's see the whole piece for a second and see what is this. This is, the name of this piece is a red violin with an ore, a blue teapot. And it's funny, it's, it's such a lively piece to see a contrast like that and then all this other stuff going on holding it together. There's this wonderful wash in the background of the canvas that's holding the whole thing together. It's this uh, kind of like an earthy, um, uh, this is definitely an autumn painting to me, or late summer. It's got all the flowers in it that someone's picked in the garden, and they put them all together in this vase. And it's a, a very homey piece. It's, it's a piece that's a home that's, you know, it's a country home, something that's a little more settled. This painting uh, that's estimated to go for twenty-five to 3500 was at Christie's in an auction in 2008. And so it'd be quite interesting for someone to actually take it home and have it in their own home when it was such an important piece to the, the history of... Uh, basically a late modernist uh, history. Now, if you look at something like this, which I consider kind of homey and kind of, I don't know what to, uh, what would you call it, like um, humble, sort of a humble home piece. Now, think of a humble home piece like that, and then where do you go in your head when you think of a home? This is so appropriate for a country home. And then I think about coming around the corner, come around over here, Let's head this way and look at this piece. And this is a totally different world. This is a world where you've got pop art zooming out at you and you think, how does that relate to all that's going on here? And it's, to me, it's about a lively life, like a crazy lively life, celebrating the life of Marilyn Monroe. This is a mixed media piece, obviously. It's painted, but it's also sealed in this box so that it protects the neon sign that's on front. And this piece was painted by Enrico Minera in 2005. It is called Norma. Um, it's exquisitely painted. I, I, I don't know if you zoom in on some of these features, see what you can catch of the, the lips or the eyes. They're meticulously painted. They look like they were snapshot. And obviously, it's her name. Marilyn Monroe's given name was Norma. And the canvas is sort of a, a celebration of her larger-than-life presence, the craziness that she was. All the vibrancy that she brought to life is in this painting, and all the brush strokes and the marks. And it's very, uh, it's a, obviously a 1980s uh, view of that, where it's got the um, Memphis kind of electricity flying through it, and all this uh, gestural abstraction that's going on in the background. Uh, it's a lot of energy in this piece. I mean, it's, it's crazy to have her staring at you like that. We've looked at some paintings this, this afternoon earlier where we were looking at you know, the humanity and, and simplicity in a gaze, and that isn't this at all. This is, this is all about brash sort of uh, pop personas and life and celebration of a street art. And I mean, if you like Madonna, you'll like this. Um, this is fired up and, and on fire at the same time. So no question. Uh, this is a mixed media piece. The estimate is nine to twelve thousand for this piece. Um, we, we look forward to you coming to the auction and taking a look around at the different pieces. We also look forward to hearing your feedback. And so you can get us at live auctioneers. I'm sorry, art auctioneers, live auctioneers at uh, arttv.com, and you can find us there and leave us any of your feedback. You have several ways to get in touch with us. You can go to uh, livearttv.com and just contact us. You can go to info and email us at info at livearttv.com. And you can also call us. And the number you want to call us on is 855-983-5483. That's 855-983-5483. Give us a ring. Talk to us. And I, I sincerely want to encourage you to give us a ring because we'd like to hear what you feel, what you think. 
And uh, what excites you about these pieces? You know, everybody has a story, and if you think of these pieces and you, and you remember something from your own life, you know, I, I rem when I look at this piece, I always remember my grandmother because she set the table beautifully, and she had a silver bowl that was similar to this. Uh, she also had a, a piece of crystal that was cut, um, and the two would be near each other, and they signify sort of the, the abundance of the table, the joy of sitting together, and the, the, the elegance of sort of spending um, an afternoon lunch, you know, quietly in, in service. Uh, she was very religious, and so we always get into things about... Uh, God in our lives, and, and some of these things, when something is that well done, I think it, it embl it's emblematic of what it means to be, uh, you know, m closer to a, a, I think, a spiritual notion, you know, something being pure or, or elegant, uh, and I, on that note, I'm getting thirsty. Let me get a quick sip, and then let's move over here for a second. Let's take a look at a very different work, and you've got to ask me some questions. I hope you call in. It's LiveArtTV.com, and we're going to be at Live Auctioneers on February 25th at 3 p.m. We want to see you there. Give us a ring. Let us know what you think, and talk to us about some of these pieces. This is a crazy piece. This is called Sphere. It's by Costa Longa, and it was painted in 1971. This is a mixed-media piece, and it's estimated to go from 15 to 2,500. Again, this is an unusual piece. It's actually, it's surprising to me that in 1971 this piece was painted when this is mixed media, which is kind of like a, a, a foam adhesion that's added to the, to the base of wood. This wasn't going on in the United States until the late 80s um, into the 1900s, you know, late 1990s, uh, early 1990s, I'm sorry. And then people seeing it here early on, it's, you think, what does something like this signify? Is it's, there's an argument in painting about abstraction and reality. And basically, when something is like a bowl of fruit is illusionistically painted, that's considered reality. But actually, that's more illusionistic if you think about it. Putting strokes around on a canvas and calling them grapes is very strange. But here you have just chunks of paint, right? You have chunks of red paint, and you have this big swath of red paint, and then you have this foam and this texture. So in essence, people might call this abstraction, but it's very real, right? It's very tangible. You can feel this whole thing, this like blood red moon hanging over your bed. This would be a mad bedroom scene. Um, <laughs> I would love to go through that and have this painted. It's framed actually quite beautifully in a black wooden matte frame on a, on a sprayed matte background that's all very uh, um, textural. Sort of, it's, this is a subtle texture. This is even subtler, almost nothing. But this is, has somewhat of a texture to it, and then this has a significant texture, obviously. All of them setting it off. And there's kind of a yellow glow. If you come up around the top of the painting, there's this yellow sort of sunny glow sprayed up in here and stuff. You'll see it. And this is, this is an unusual piece. This piece, again, is Sphere. It's by Costa Longa, and it was made in 1971. You can find it along with over 200 other works of art and object arts, silver, carpets, uh, on an auction we're having at liveauctioneers.com. Liveauctioneers.com, and you can find us there under livearttv.com. Don't forget to find us and give us a ring. We're at 855 983 5483. That's once again 855 983 5483. We look forward to speaking to you about some of these works. Give us a ring. Let us think, know what you're feeling. Uh, also, ask questions. If you have something that you're wondering about, feel free to call and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What are the possibilities of having a conversation around that? We have all sorts of options for you to access this art. Remember that this channel is very different than most cases. Most cases nowadays, you're going to see something that's been mediated and managed for you. And this is a case where you're seeing work that is live by actual individual people that cared about what they were doing. These are artisans. All of our work is handmade. All of the work is made by people who are crafting it from their heart, from their soul. They're not crafting it from uh, 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 you know, a, a, a factory or a catalog or whatever, they're, they're crafting it with their hands. And that's amazing to see. Look at the silver work that you're looking at. Each piece of these shoes, these little slippers, was hand wrought with someone's hands. This was all work by hand. I mean, there's some really subtle, beautiful, soft pieces in the back that are kind of harder to see. You see this piece? Look at this baby shoe. All in sterling silver. This is an amazing set. Look at that. And how, and, and how subtle that is. Very beautiful, very quiet. Um, so it's exciting uh, to see, you know, live artwork actually being made. Now, I'd like to head over this way. Let's zoom around here a little bit. We're going to come right to this corner. There's some pieces over here. They're a pair of Venetian Rococo-style glass-fronted cabinets. 
They have incredible detailing on the inside. These are all hand painted. And I don't know if we can get in here at all, Chip, but there's some wonderful texture and pattern on the inside of these. Look at this and maybe go down one or so, see if you can see it better. There you go, buddy. That's perfect. Look, look at that detail work, right? This is all hand carved. If you touch it, you can actually feel the pattern with your hand. These are all hand carved and stamped down there. And then there's inlays of like a mother of pearl in it. These cabinets are locked and the top opens, allowing for uh, writing or writing instruments to be on the inside. They are uh, 19 and 3 quarters wide, 16 inches deep, and 31 and a half inches high. The estimate is 16 to 2400 for these pieces. 16 to 2400. They are lot 81. The top of this piece is also quite beautiful. I don't know if I can uh, uh, lift it off. Let me see. Let me see if I can get up here, take a peek. Boop. Any luck that we can get a shot of that? How's you doing, buddy? Yeah, beautiful. Look at the detail on that. That's all carved and then painted. So it's all hand carved and painted. And that's pretty exquisite, right? Look at those patterns. Very Rococo. Rococo being sort of a period after Baroque when things got kind of wild. Started, uh, Baroque was all about movement and life. And this is about the explosion of movement in life. It starts to go just to unfurl a period when we wanted to celebrate some of the lush, lively qualities of life. That's an exquisite piece. Um, on top of that piece, you see this wonderful alabaster sculpture. This is a sculpture of Aradne and the panther. Aradne and the panther. It's a German sculpture carved out of stone on a molded square base of black hard stone. This piece is estimated to go for 28 to 3600 28 to 3600 and this is lot 173 now this piece is exquisitely carved and you can see in the stone some places you can see some of the patterns of the stone when you look around it it's got all sorts of, of, of patterns of the natural stone in it there's some line work and whatnot in the alabaster quite exquisite this piece is an unusual piece, I think, because of the, the, the dichotomy of the smooth kind of Aradne and her strength and the panther being this, this other type of strength, which is a muscular sort of masculine strength. So you have this combination of a masculine and a soft femininity um, coming into something that holds together quite well. This is a German uh, carved by a German man. And it's, let me get to the other side. There's, a, there's an amazing amount of detail. I don't know if we can see some of the nuances uh, of, of the collar and whatnot. Yeah, there's a collar on the panther, and it's got um, a, like a piece of hair here under the collar. And there's, there's details all over the place when you touch it. It actually feels like you're touching the skin of a panther. You'd be surprised what you feel. It feels like there's bones and skin under here in all the nuances of what's happening. It's pretty incredible. This is a nice piece, very strong. It's, a, again, an alabaster sculpture by a German sculptor of a Rodney and the panther. It was done after the artist Johann Heinrich von Daniker, Johann Heinrich von Daniker, and it's on a molded base of black hardstone. It's about 41 centimeters high, 37 centimeters wide, and 18 centimeters deep. So you can see the size of my hand here, I think, and get a sense of how big it is, but it's about twice the size of my hand. And it's estimated to go for 28 to $3,600. It is lot number 173. That's an exquisite piece. Look at that, look at the drape in the front and how it mimics the fold of her body and how she's moving. It's amazing to me how fluid this thing is still and yet how masculine and kind of blocked in it feels, how, how, how all this holds together. Look at this, this drape down, up in, around. Beautiful movement, a very, very, very great range of movement in this sculpture actually. There's quite a lot going on. Remember to give us a call, 855-983-5483, 855 855-983-5483. Nine eight three five four eight three. And why do I want you to call us? One, I want you to call to buy a piece. But two, I want you to talk to me. <laughs> I really want you to come and talk to me about what you're seeing and the pieces that excite you here. Look at the range of what we have. We have silver, paintings, some furniture. We've got that clock. Maybe we talk about, we've got one painting behind me to talk about. We could save that to the end if you're in the mood. I don't know what you want to go to. We could talk about the table. I don't think we've talked about the table. No, let me look for it. Here we go. I got the table. 
So this table is a little bit, you've kind of been seeing it the whole time, but you may not have noticed it. There's this very long English oval dining room table. It's a Queen Anne table with Queen Anne chairs. You can see one of the chairs on the far left side. I'll pull the chair out for you over there just so you can see what's happening. But this is 12, 12 chairs. Two of them are side chairs. I'm sorry, two, uh, 12 are side chairs. Two are arm chairs. And this piece opens out to has two more leaves in it. So you're actually only seeing it with two leaves in it. So it measures about 11 feet long total when it has all four leaves in it. The exact measurements is 133 inches by 47 inches wide and 29 high. So think about it, 133. So yeah, so a little over 11 feet long. And there's one of the beautiful armchairs. There's two armchairs and 12 side chairs. That's 14 Queen's Anne's chairs. The entire table is made of mahogany. It's an exquisite table, and it's estimated to go for $55 to $6,500. This table supports a drop-down table when it is open, and when it's closed completely, it's a perfect circle. It's actually a lovely little circle, so it's got a lot going on in it. Once again, this oval dining room table with 14 Queen Anne's chairs is made of mahogany. There's some beautiful details of the, the woodwork. You rarely see woodwork like this nowadays. It's, it's all carefully carved and put together by old techniques. I mean, things that are hundreds of years old. But, but look at the detail in here. Look at some of the details on these pieces, right? You feel that in your hand. It feels like a stable piece of real furniture. Um, you rarely see that nowadays. You see these legs, what's going on with these legs, how they're all hand carved and pieced together. It's really elegantly done. Nice piece of, of furniture, something that'll last for probably centuries, but at least you'd have it for your lifetime and the rest of your family. This is a piece that you can actually pass on, which is always nice. Now, I'd like to head over here, come this way, and let's look at a couple pieces. This is an unusual piece since we're talking about furniture. Let's, let's talk about this piece for a second. This is a 19th century antique mahogany Davenport with a leather top right here for writing on. It actually allows the ink and the, and the paper not to slip around so much. Um, it opens obviously, to store your writing instruments. Now, this is a pretty exquisite piece. You have to think this is a 19th century mahogany piece. Really elegant, um, beautiful piece, right? And think about it. This piece is estimated to go for five to $800, five to $800. So you can't buy new furniture for that price. And this is a piece that's from the 19th century, inlaid on top and front. It's got beautiful wooden inlays here, here, and on the front, and it's a cabinet on the bottom. It locks as well, and the top is again open, as I mentioned, for writing on. Now, don't forget, you can find us at liveauctioneers.com. Liveauctioneers.com will be holding an auction of Live Art TV's work. That's our company here, livearttv.com, and you can find us online. If you need any information, feel free to email us at info at livearttv.com or give us a call. Again, the number is 855 983-5483. And my name is Thomas Boskett. You can call me, leave me a message if you want. You can also talk to anybody here at Live Art TV. We're welcome to help you. We are at Live Auctioneers on February 25th at 3 p.m. And we want to hear from you. We got to have your input because it makes this thing alive. All the artisans that made these works, which are one of a kind artworks, are also waiting to hear from us in their spirit. Because otherwise the work kind of lays low goes quiet and disappears. We want to bring it back. Look at some of these beautiful pieces, and let's hear your voices on them. Now, this piece here is by an artist named Ideo Pantaleoni. Pantaleoni painted this piece later in his life. It was a, a, a piece um, during the 60s, I believe, and he, he painted it. Its name was Halo. It was 1960, actually. I just see it. Uh, it's 19 and a half inches by 27 and a half inches, and this piece has this uh, free-flowing sort of electric halo feel to it. Uh, the whole thing is kind of glowing, like it's a halo on top of a halo. And I think there's this halo of patterns beneath her. There's a halo of colors around her. There's a halo on her head. And it's an unusual piece to me because it's, it's, uh, it feels, uh, what was striking to me was at first it felt like a comic and it was sort of silly. But then when I started looking at it, it, it reverberated like, um, like a, a sunny day does. You know, when your eyes are closed and you feel the sun shining through your eyes and it has this feeling of that 
along with this kind of pop feel of being all the colors of popular art and something that's moving and flickering before your eyes, like you're just seeing it for the first time every time. It feels like it never dies. It's like a lot of paintings that use brown and things, they can be beautiful and comforting, but they're not, they're not vibrantly alive like this. And when I look at this piece, I just see like, you know, life starting up, going around like a Ferris wheel, and it's got a ton of attitude. Um, I think if, you, if you've got some spice in your life and you've got some spirit left in your jump, then get this painting. I think it's an awesome painting. <laughs> it's really electric as hell and fun. And I think, uh, what is it, estimated to go for 65 to 7,500. Uh, you can, of course, bid on it at uh, liveauctioneers.com or livearttv.com. Liveauctioneers.com and then search out livearttv.com. We have over 200 works of art and objects of art for sale. And you'll see some of these pieces, including the pieces of Edeo Pantaleoni. It's a well-known painter from Italy, less known in the western uh, side of the world. But go to Europe, and you'll see quite a bit of his work and uh, learn about his history. He has a, a long history dating back to the 40s. And he, he studied, by the time he was, I think, 19 years old, he already had studied in three different art schools. And it's a whole different experience than we have in the West, where most of us study you know, in our 20s. He was studying when he was a teenager. And by the time he was in his teens, late teens, you know, 19 and so, he already had a professional career and had shown at the Venice, uh, not the Venice, I'm sorry, the Milan Biennial, and uh, had shown in several different schools in Bologna and uh, the Dosa Dosi School. And so he's well known in Italy and it's pretty uh, amazing. You should look up his history. Again, it's uh, Pantaleoni is his name, Pantaleoni, P-A-N-T-A-L-E-O-N-I, Pantaleoni. Uh, Ideo is his first name, like idea, I-D-E-O, Ideo. Um, let's see where we're gonna go. Let me take a look here, and I think, oh, we're gonna head down to some of the carpets. Yeah, let's take a look at a carpet. Can we scoop down here? I don't know if we can look at this piece here. This is a, a, um, a Sherwan antique carpet. It's a Karabakh style with a natural vegetable dye, and you have to imagine these pieces were all hand dyed and hand woven. And look here, look at some of the patterns that you see down here. Look at some of this stuff, all free association. This is not something they had in a map. This is something that the artist, as they were weaving, was figuring out all of these patterns and how they related. What's also interesting is you always find some hand uh, responses to, to looming or, or weaving. And you can, you can see the back of this is all hand woven and how it's all put together. There's no plastics. It's all hand vegetable dye, hand dyed and hand woven and made with vegetable dyes, which is absolutely amazing that it's lasted this well for so long. This piece is lot 101, and it's 85 and a half inches by 46 and a half inches. It's estimated to go for 35 to $4,500, and it's a Karabakh antique style carpet made with the natural vegetable dyes from Russia. This piece is exquisite. Now if we come up, take this piece and take a, take a long shot of it. See if you can show the whole thing for a second. And let's take a glance. Remember to give us a call. We love chatting with you, finding out what you're thinking. Look at that whole piece. That's, that's pretty long. I mean, I'm a, I'm a tall guy, and that's 85 inches long. So I guess that's, yeah, higher than I am. So it's about seven feet, probably. You, got, you can see my foot's a foot long. And that's three, four, five, six, and a bit. Yeah, it's about seven feet long. That's a heck of a piece. And I wonder, like, it's, it's interesting, when you look at these patterns, they don't really symbolize anything that represents the physical world. I mean, you can try to impose, you know, butterflies and bugs on them, but it doesn't really work. You're, you're gonna notice that everything is sort of um, so abstract that you kind of just, what I feel is you, you, you have more of a spiritual relationship to it, and I don't mean necessarily religious as much as I mean it's not material. You can't think of the material world. You know what, there's a lovely moment on this edge here. Let me see how close we are. Yeah, yeah, come over here if you can. Thank you. And look at, this, look at this geometric kind of shape here and see how it comes to a point, right? And then come up this way, start coming up, and look at how the shape changes a little bit, right? The point gets flattened. You see that long point, right? But now the point is completely squashed. It's cut off. The point would be way over here, but it's completely cut off. What this is showing us is this is not machine made. This is human made. As you go up, the pattern disappears and changes as you go along. So all the while the artist was, was kind of weaving this thing, they had to make decisions along the way of how the pattern was changing because of the organic nature of the actual pattern. And that always blows me away that, that the stuff wasn't, uh, it's not mechanically produced, it's humanly produced. And that's so rare to see. Yeah, and there's a weird little Pac-Man moment out here. There's these strange little digital video game kind of creatures. It's funny, I just realized that this looks a lot more like video games than it looks like anything else. 
It's, it's <laughs> maybe this is where the, the modern world came into existence, is inside a carpet. If we come up over here, we're going to look at our last carpet of the day. This is another Karabakh carpet, hand dyed again, 85 and a half inches by 46 and a half inches wide. That's four, almost four feet wide. Uh, uh, and, and almost twice that length long. It's about seven feet again. It's estimated to go for six to $8,000, and it is made with natural vegetable dyes. This is hand-woven in Russia. It's, it's, it's called a uh, Karabakh, a Karabakh-style carpet. Um, if you look around, this one has a, a little bit of a leather strip on the back it's holding the edging. Um, and this is, this is a very, very subtle carpet. This piece is not complicated. It's a flower pattern. I mean, it's complicated in that it's busy, but it's a beautiful rose pattern, beautiful rose buds on it. And then it's got these kind of flights of fancy. They almost look like bird flowers, but they're, they're flowers stemming out of that. It uh, looks like the pattern is mostly kind of in reverse for us right now. It's kind of hanging the other way, but it's uh, a nice way to see it because you see the actual abstraction of the, of the contrast, the dark contrast against these pinks and light sort of floral things. This reminds me of a, a coloration from the 1950s. Um, it's this, um, uh, like a poodle skirt. Remember the old poodle skirts when things had some, some lively flair to them but had supposedly some discretion and <laughs> elegance to them? I think we've got both of those in this one. A little bit of discretion and a little bit of flair. Not that bad, but it, it's, it's definitely there and alive. I think I'm rhyming. I think I'm tired of you. <laughs> <laughs> to get going. Let's take a look around a little bit. Let's see if there's any pieces here that we want to review. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do the piece behind me. Let's look at this. Maurizio Del Vecchio. Now, this is a painter. He's interesting to look up online. Maurizio Del Vecchio paints in a beautifully elegant, uh, uh, careful script. You'll see uh, these pieces. When he paints, he looks like he's, um, it's hard to describe. It's almost like building architecture. It feels like he's building each piece of the painting very methodically and uh, 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 systematically, almost like we build buildings. You know, when you think of building a painting, you can put the lines wherever you want. You can rub a shape on or, or, or a line or a stripe or whatever and put it wherever you want. But in architecture, we always have to start from the bottom and go up. You can't build the 17th floor when you don't have the first 16. And so here you have a painting that is constructed more like architecture. He kind of builds from the back up. So many of the strokes and stuff are started back here and then they build out from there until you get onto the top. Now, I'm going to give you his name, Maurizio Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio is of the old in Italian, D-E-L-V-E-C-C-H-I-O, Del Vecchio. And this painting is estimated to go for 15 to 2,500. It's called New York City Sunset Station. Woo! Look at all that. <laughs> kind of explosion of marks. And, and, and it was painted in 2015, New York City Sunset Station. And it's this crazy late afternoon painting where the painting is just melting. Um, the whole thing is starting to kind of dissolve into itself and it's very, um, very exciting to see live. I mean, there's tons of color in it. It's 40 by 40 inches. It's uh, a, a good scale for a, like a study or a place where you want some energy, like a family room would be great because it's kind of crazy, although it's settling down for the day. I think it's not that bad. And remember, this is uh, going to be in a live auction at liveauctioneer.com, liveauctioneer.com, and you're going to find it under liveartv.com. Uh, my name is Thomas Boskett. Feel free to talk to me if you want to drop us a line. We are available online at livearttv.com. Livearttv.com will have an auction again, like I just said, on February 25th at 3 p.m. It will be of paintings like this by Maurizio Del Vecchio. It will be of sculptures. Uh, it will be of carpets. This is a beautiful antique Karabakh carpet. You have things by an artist named Ideo Pantaleoni over here, which will be paintings that are very lively. And you can find these all at liveartv.com. Liveartv.com is an easy place to find us and talk to us. And most important, I always want you to call us. It's at 855. Now, hold on a minute. I've got the worst memory. 983-5483. Once again, a little slower. 855-983-5483. I want you to give me a ring. Say hi to us and tell us what you think. If you've got stories that you remember, hey, look at that. Boo. There you can get us again. If you've got stories you remember, think about sharing them with us because it brings art alive for us. Art, to me, is an experience. It's something that challenges us or supports us. It's something that excites us. It's something to memorialize the things that matter to us in our lives. Most of the objects in the world that we interact with are commercial objects. They are mass-produced. 
they are at everybody's disposal. Um, they usually fall apart pretty quickly or, or last a few years at best. Um, these are works of art that have been around, some of them for decades. Some of the works we've seen today and that are in the auction have been around for hundreds of years. You can actually look at these pieces. They're all online at livearttv.com, and you can peruse them at your comfort. You can ask questions about them to any of us. Feel free to call us at the, at the um, liveart.com. You can call us at the number 855-983-5483. It's on the upper right side of your screen. And you can tell us what you think about these pieces. You've got paintings. This wonderful painting that we're passing by now um, is, is by this artist, Mariana Edna Volz. It's this fabulous, crazy piece here that's full of life and sort of a, a, a late autumn life. Uh, I feel like it's late summer, early autumn when things are just sort of ending and, and yet at the same time so vibrant and full of life. It's this great transition between seasons. You know, we've got these fantastic silver pieces. I, I mentioned this piece earlier. You should look back at the tape and see this is a wonderful inkwell that shows you all the wonders of, a, of, a, of a, when we used ink, you know, the, the actual wells with the glass in them and the places where you'd store your pens in the back. It's got these, I'm going to leave this up. Look at this beautiful detail on this right here and this handle. I mean, really an exquisite piece. You, you can't get pieces like this in the modern world. And these pieces are going anywhere from hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars. They are all affordable and incredibly affordable. Uh, for the quality of work you're seeing, you're seeing objects that are, you know, this is a Tiffany uh, bowl of, uh, that could be for flowers or a, or a centerpiece. And you're just not going to see pieces like this for the prices that you're going to find here. It's really unheard of. Um, it's, it's a rare day. My alarm just went off. I don't know what for, but it's reminding me of something. Now I'm going to grab a drink real fast, and we're going to say a few words over here. I think everybody needs some liquid, eh? I'm still struck by these pieces, and I'd like to look at them a little more carefully. Uh, let's, let's put them up here, if we can. Let's take a glance. This is Kirk and Son Silver. Kirk and Son Silver, let me find a piece. Actually, we haven't looked at the sugar bowl. Look at this piece. Um, this is a really elegant piece. Uh, it's hard to describe all the, the things you're going to see in this when you look at it. I mean, we're getting a nice close in that Chip's finding right now. But look at, look at all the details on this. And where do you see something that's so full of florals and, and uh, rosebuds? You know, right here, I'll let it sit still for a minute. Look at the rosebuds right in here. There's two rosebuds sitting right in the center, right? These are exquisite. And then you have the leaves. I'll, I'll tilt it up a bit. Look at the leaves on the side, right? Look at all that work. And to think that these, are, th these were all handcrafted. This is the company Kirk and & Sons. And I believe it's stamped on the bottom. I don't think we'll be able to see it that well. But it's right there. Any luck? Eh, it's tiny. If you zoom in on your screens, you might be able to catch it. But right here, it has the actual stamp for the company that designed these things back in the day. And these are all handcrafted. These are significant works of art. Um, I'll find you all the details on that. Give me a second. Let me see if I can get you the details on, on exactly um, what it is about that piece that I wanted to share with you. Uh, hold on, buddies. Stick with me. Here it is. It's a Kirk & Sons silver tea set. It's lot 185. That's what I wanted to get. And it's 3,200 grams of silver. So when you look at the whole set, let's get them all out here for a second. Look at this. Exquisite. Um, look at these pieces, right? This is a heck of a set. Um, this one I have to lift up with two hands because it's rather substantial. Whoop. All right. Let me turn that around so you can see both the handles. There you are. Boop, boop, boop. Now, look at these. When are you going to see a set like this, all made of silver, for five to eight thousand dollars is what the estimate is on this. You can go online and look up silver's tea sets made by Kirk and Sons. See if you find anything even remotely this ornate, perfectly preserved, and for such a, a reasonable price. This is a Kirk and Sons silver tea set, four-piece silver tea set, coffee, tea, sugar, and a creamer. All for an estimated five to eight thousand dollars. This is at livearttv.com. The auction is going to be on February twenty fifth at three p.m. Look at that. Look at the exquisite work on this thing. Look at this. Can you see all of this? There's a sunflower up here. Roses on the side. A little peony. Unbelievable work. Yeah. 
These are even more beautiful in life. They look pretty darn good on TV, I'll say that, but you've got to see these in life. They're just absolutely glorious pieces, really, really nicely done. And you're never going to find a piece of silver that refined and beautiful. Give us a call, 855-983-5483. Let me know what you think about these. What's your experience? What's your relationship to something this exquisite? When do you get to see something like this? And when do you share this with your family and whatnot, right? When do you get to share something like this for a lifetime? Your family's going to pass this on and on and on, and it's going to go through generations. And you're the one who can actually celebrate it, bring it to them, and, and acknowledge it, that it's something that they might appreciate or enjoy. This is uh, also, you'll see that there's pieces that go with the, the uh, silver notion, or these pieces back here are those silver flatware sets that are the full set. There's actually um, 149 pieces here. Um, so it's actually, it goes all the way back. You can see, I'll push these in for a second. There's these beautiful pieces. There's, there's four different types of spoons here. Let me show you some of them. Look at these, right? You've got your uh, uh, stew spoons. You've got your soup spoons. You've got some dessert spoons back here. Look at that. Isn't that a wonderful piece? And you wouldn't believe you should feel these in your hand. Not only do they feel good, because the silver actually conducts your heat and warms up. These are all stamped on the back with Sheffield. They actually say Sheffield on the back. And they're all sterling silver pieces. There's an entire set. The complete set is here. I'm going to pull you up to the next drawer for a second. Let's close this drawer for a second. Pull this one open. These are all the forks. They're actually uh, smaller. You have salad forks. And then you have some of the dinner forks. And you should feel these. I mean, they really are exquisite. They're actually stamped on the end with an initial PC, but it's very faint. And I know that you can have them re-engraved if it interests you. They just gently polish this off because it's very slightly stamped. And it was made to be refinished uh, with a new family name in it, which would last, again, for a lifetime. Uh, they're all protected in this oak cabinet. If you want to look at the cabinet for a second, let me move this bowl and look at this cabinet. Isn't that lovely? Lock and key. And there's all your silver protected so it doesn't tarnish. It will actually stay in this cabinet for some time. Let me move my lovely water bottle and take a sip again. You're not going to see a cabinet of silver that refined and beautiful for a long time. I hope you have a chance to appreciate it, possibly um, purchase it, but at least get to look at it today and say, wow, uh, show it to your family or, or share it with your family. Uh, there's a, a beautiful array of pieces. If you just joined us a second ago, you'll see that there's a, an entire collection of flatware in here, 149 pieces. And we're going to have many other silver pieces at the auction, but to find a full set like this is very rare. That, that, that at this, um, I think the estimate was what? Like, let me look again. The estimate was so reasonable, sort of shocking to me. Um, for a piece of uh, a set of flatware this big, it's rare that you'd find it. And of course, there we go. It's a service of 12. And let's, let's see if we can get inside. Oh, we'll actually look at some of these ladles. See this ladle? That's a lovely piece, right? There's the ladles. There's a strainer sort of for like uh, uh, pickles or an olive. These, I mean, <laughs> these are your ice tongs. Well, oh, who work is here? Serving forks, all in perfect condition. Now this piece, again, this is 12 serving flatware, an oak canteen with five drawers, 40, 149 pieces. Uh, it is 8,664 grams. That's eight kilos of silver in the full set. Take this out. You can see some of the pieces. This is eight kilos of silver. It's unheard of. You have a set of full set of 12, and it is stamped Mappin and Webb Sheffield is all engraved on the actual uh, back of the, of the pieces. They're all stamped right there and engraved. You can see it just a, just a bit when you pick them up. And you'll, just, you'll have that when you, when you see them. There's some beautiful knives up here as well. So the full collection today that we were reviewing was painting, silver, some clocks, uh, some object arts over here of the slippers, 
We've got carpets. We've got a couple paintings around here, around the room. And there's one painting that I've been saving to the end. It's right over there. Let's go over here and take a look. Come on, come on, come on with me. And let's look at this piece. This is, again, uh, a, a little bit of an unusual piece. Let's do, let me find it here. Hold on a second. It's a Salvador Dali piece. And it's an etching dry point of uh, two gods. And it's called Mercurius. Uh, Mercury and Venus is the theme used by Dali. And it was, uh, it's, it's lot 140. It's estimated to go for 15 to, 15 to 2,500. It is a dry point etching on uh, Japon paper, which is uh, like a mulberry fiber. It's a very long fiber paper. When you see it in life, it has a shimmer to it like, uh, like uh, silken hair. It's very, very uh, uh, sort of ephemeral, the way it wraps around itself and whatnot. And so you'll see that when you see it live. But it's etched which means basically that it's scratched into metal. Uh, it's scratched into a metal plate, and then it's uh, colored with like a, 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 a second plate that actually is full of the color. It can be a lithographic color. But you can see at the edge of the plate right here, at the edge of the paper, there's a line that goes around the painting that is actually where the etching, and I don't know if we can catch a glimpse of it. Let me see, where's my hand? Woo, there we are. OK, yeah, thank you, Chip. That right there, there's a line, and that's why it cuts off, is that's the edge of a plate. And it's a metal plate that actually in, in, it presses into the paper and makes a permanent impression in the paper, and it's called an etching. Etchings can be done different ways. You can actually uh, do an engraving, which is cutting into the metal, but this is actually an etching where you actually etch it with a, a chemical treatment. And you can see in the whole painting, you see kind of the gods. You see one god down below and another god up above. This is Mercury on the winged heels of Mercury stepping on a cloud and moving like a, the wind and, and injured up above and then the whirlwinds of the torments of the gods tearing things up and both of them running away. Uh, this, is, this is quite a beautiful piece. Venus Venus is at the bottom, and she's pushing up away from Mercury, and it feels like the fabric's all pulling her down to the ground. So there's this wonderful tension between being pulled and pushed and explosions and the speed of Mercury moving through this painting. It's a lot going on, and it's a very delicate piece. Uh, it's almost... it's it's. It's hard to see all the nuances, even in, in person. You have to kind of wait a minute to catch all the line work and stuff. I mean, if you look at all this curvaceous lines, kind of wildness that's going on in here, wonderfully drawn. Look at the drawing in that. Isn't that crazy? That's Dali at his best. That's Salvador Dali's painting of Mercury and Venus. It's called Mercurius, and it's a, an etching in dry point. Oh, it was dry point. Yeah, dry point is actually engraving, which is where you cut the, the metal Rather than etch it with a chemical, you actually cut into it. And the piece is lot number 140. It goes for $1,500 to $2,500. And it will be in the auction, Live Art TV auction, at liveauctioneers.com. You can go to Live Art TV at any point there and find us, or you can go directly to liveauctioneers.com. Okay? My name is Thomas Boskett. We look forward to hearing from you. Again, if you have any information you need from us, feel free to reach out. You can email us at info at liveartv.com or call us at 855-983-5483. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time today.